All right, lads, I'm Sarko. This video has been made possible due to my YouTube producers and members. So a big shout out to all the Giga Chads currently on the screen. Today we're taking a look at a bit of a Franken tank. The Israelis imported lots of American M48 main battle tanks and used them extensively in the wars with the Arab states. While the Soviets were the first nation to theorize the use of explosive reactive armor, it was the Israelis who were the first to adopt it and use it in service on their M48 main battle tanks. The ERA, the Blazer, was deemed incredibly effective at stopping chemical warheads, and the Americans took notice. But the M48 was rather hard to protect an M48 due to the cast rounded frontal armor scheme. So when it came to produce the M60, the hull was made to be angular and pointy, making it a lot easier to plaster in explosive reactive arm bricks. This is the easiest way to tell the M48 and the M60 apart. The M60 has an angular flow upper and lower frontal plate. The Israelis also bought a shitload of the M60 and then also plastered it in explosive reactive armor. But the tank we're taking a look at today is one of those M60s. The Blazer ERA was taken off. Some Israeli cracked out some 6013 welding rods and welded some hydro rocket pods to the gun mantlet for some reason. This creates quite a fruity or quirky tank in War Thunder, as it is a fully stabilized M60 firing Sabo rounds, but it also has 38 Hydra rockets strapped to it. This makes for some very interesting gameplay, as you can kind of just spam rockets at people going around a corner. It's possibly one of the only gimmick tanks in War Thunder where the gimmick is actually at least useful, and I liked it so much that I decided to make a review on it. So the Magak Hydra, as it's called, is currently battery rating 8.7 in the 6th rank of the Israeli tech tree. The Magak Hydra is currently forded with the Magak 6R, meaning you are going to have to grind out 3 tanks in order to get to the Magak, which is a little bit of a pain in the ass. but what can you do? To grind out the tank, you're going to have to grind 100,000 RP points before unlocking it for the cost of 550,000 Silver Lions. The expert qualification cost is again 550,000 silver lions and for the ace quality it's 2,100 golden eagles. This drastically reduces the amount of time you're going to have to spend reloading and repairing so it is well worth the investment if you are serious about the Israeli tech tree. Because the Magak Hydra is a tech tree vehicle we are sadly going to have to experience the terrible stock heat of first grind. While two of our other ammunition options are in rank 1 modifications, that is the smoke shell and the hess shell which aren't really going to be a big help. The M111 or the DM23 equivalent is in the rank 3 modifications, but of course I would recommend getting the parts and FPE first before going on to the M111 round. The tank also lacks a thermal imager, only having a night vision devices. But if you get the parts and FPE, I'd go for the ammunition and then go for the mobility. So traditionally, the biggest weaknesses of the M60 and the M48 was the lack of a stabilizer. But because the Hydra gets the add-on stabilizer adjustment and it gets a good sable round as well as some spicy rockets, is this tank going to force all my viewers to go out and start grinding the Israeli tech tree? Well, almost certainly not. But it is a good tank, so let's crack on with the review. Alright boys, so welcome back. The Magak Hydra's mobility is pretty much decent. There's not too much to say about it. It's got a power to weight ratio of 16.1 horsepower per ton. It weighs nearly 50 tons with a 750 horsepower engine. The M60s have never been famed for their mobility, but the top speed of 49 km per hour is pretty nice. The acceleration feels pretty good to be honest. You don't you never really feel like you're sluggish. It's kind of like the British tanks were going in a straight line. It's very fast. But the second you press the A or the D kill, or the D, D key rather, it kind of nukes all of your speed entirely. A letdown though is the reverse speed. It can only go backwards at 8 kilometers per hour. This does make it a major kick in the balls if you're trying to brawl in a city or trying to retreat from a sketchy situation. But the bigger issue in my opinion is the survivability. The M60s are still using solid plate armor steel. There is no sort of composite or explosive reactive armor found on this tank. So against the high power guns at battery rating 9.3 and 
9.7. Your armor is basically just dead weight to be honest. It's kind of like a lot of the British tanks. It was a tank designed to fight against APDS rounds and the real life meta I guess kind of moved away. The US Army got power crept, should complain to admin. But anyway, if we take a look at this cutaway, we can see that there is ammunition absolutely everywhere. The only place where there isn't ammunition is where the crew sits, which obviously you can't really take get shot anywhere in this tank without either ruining some Israeli's day or sending him to the moon. The armor of the tank is fairly good if it was a 7.7 .7 vehicle. But as I said, because it's 8.7 and we're going up against heat of fast and sabre rounds, which will easily penetrate your steel armor, the lower frontal plate's effective thickness of 250 millimeters isn't as great as it sounds on paper. The upper frontal plate is surprisingly a lot lower at only 198 millimeters effective thickness. Still nothing to slouch at. It's going to stop all of the lower caliber munitions. But against heat of fast, sabre and missiles, it's going to do absolutely jack shit. The turret is a variable thickness, but it's around an average of 180 millimeters. Not the best, but again, you're not really going to be stopping anything with your armor anyway. And finally, the gun mantle is only around 170 millimeters of effective thickness. To emphasize just how bad the armor of the Magak is, if we take a look at the M111 APFSDS round, the DM23 equivalent, at a range of 500 meters, we can penetrate this tank frontally pretty much everywhere from the front. And the DM23 shell is the most common round found around this battle rating. So not a single person is not going to be able to kill you really. This means the only reason to play this tank, it's not the mobility, it's not the survivability, it's just the firepower. The Magak is armed with the 105mm Sharia cannon, a license built of the American M68, which of itself was a license built L7 Royal Ordnance. Can carry 57 rounds of ammunition in total with a first stage ready rack of 22 rounds. I wouldn't take any more than this into battle really. You want to try and keep as little ammunition in the tank as possible to try to minimize, minimize those ammo racks. The gun handling is very good to be honest. We have a two plane gun stabilizer, which is a big addition for the M60s as that was by far the biggest weakness of the American tank. The gun handling of, well, we have nine degrees of gun depression, which is very good. Our turret armor isn't going to allow us to go hold down very often, but it is still nice to have. And we also have 19 degrees of gun elevation. The targeting speed of 24 degrees per second with an H crew is also very nice. That determines how fast we can rotate the turret. The reason I mentioned the expert and ace qualifications at the start of the video was in order to bring down our reload speed. Like all 105mm guns, with a stock crew our reload is 8.7 seconds and with a fully aced crew that drops down to 6.7 seconds. This 2 second reduction in the reload speed is a huge advantage for aced crew tanks compared to the stock tanks. So I would always invest in getting up your crew skills if you have the disposable income to do so. I said the lack of a gun stabilizer was one of the main weaknesses of the M60s, but well, the Magak Hydra has another weakness. It's not as big, but it's still quite big for me personally, and that is the lack of a laser rangefinder. Instead, we have a coincidence rangefinder. This type of rangefinder does not automatically lay the gun onto the correct range like a laser rangefinder does. This isn't a deal breaker, but at long range, and as someone who plays a lot of top tier, which probably explains why I sound so miserable all the time, I've kind of got used to having that laser rangefinder giving me quick and accurate estimations to target. Again, this is a skill issue, but if you play a lot of top tier, you probably are used to having a laser rangefinder. As I said, this tank does come stock, and you will have to face the dreaded Heaterfest stock grind. This will be using the M152 Heaterfest shell with around 400mm of penetration. You also have the M416 smoke shell, as well as the M156 Hesh shell. Not sure why you'd ever want to use those two rounds, but they are there if you want to. The round that I mainly use is the M111 AP FS DS round. This was the well, this was the original round which was licensed to Germany, who then called it to the DM23. Israel, for some reason, leads the way in sable rounds, not really the nation you expect but that is the case in real life. This sabre round travels very fast at 1455 meters per second and against armor angled at 60 degrees at a range of 500 meters, it can still penetrate over 190 millimeters of armor. So a very nice round indeed. While you do have a very good amount of firepower, just bear in mind that every other tank you fight will also be able to penetrate you. 
But you certainly cannot use this tank like a conqueror or a brawling tank. You can't trade hits really. You're going to have to pop out, get a shot and then go back into cover straight away. So what about our gimmick, the hydropods? Well, we have two pods available, obviously. These each contain 19 Hydra 70 rockets. These rockets travel at 740 meters per second and can penetrate 290 millimeters of armor with the warhead containing 1.2 kilos of TNT. These rockets are kind of like pinpricks. They aren't going to do major internal damage unless you get a direct hit against an enemy's crew members or the ammunition. You are still going to have to aim for vulnerable parts of a tank in order to get quick kills. I usually use this, well, I use the main gun to pop a round into them. And if I don't get a kill with a single hit, I'll then start spamming rockets at them. These rockets are a great way to mitigate the terrible heat of air stock grind though, as these rockets do come as soon as you unlock the tank. And you can basically just rush around the corner and fire them because the gun is fully stabilized and the rockets are mounted to the stabilized gun mantlet. These rockets are also fully stabilized, allowing you to fire them on the move accurately and pretty lethally with and pretty lethally, bloody hell I can't speak today, but it is a very good gimmick, having a fully stabilized uh, rocket system on your tank. While it's not really advisable for most situations, in War Thunder's tight urban maps where you can just rush around a corner and spam a bunch of rockets into people, it is a very fun and, well, not effective way of getting kills, but it does feel good to get someone pushing you and then just spamming 50 odd rockets into them. One thing to bear in mind though is that the positioning of the rockets are very off bar sight I guess compared to the main gun sight. So if you're at the first 19 rockets will be fired from the left hand side of your gunner's view. So just bear that in mind you are going to have to aim to the left and to the right depending on which um, launcher is currently being used for accurate fire. At least at close range. At longer ranges the bar sight and the travel trajectory of the rockets do kind of interdict or parallax I guess but just bear in mind if you are at very close range you are going to have to aim or offset your main gun sight to the left or right that can be quite finicky to get to used to but once you master it you can start getting some long range rocket snipes and it is incredibly fun just one hitting leopards from halfway across the map so is the Magak Hydra going to be a future staple of the Israeli tech tree and is it going to be a hidden gem in the Israeli tech tree? Well, I don't really think so. It's an incredibly fun vehicle to play, but it's not particularly effective. The mobility of the tank is all right, but not amazing. The survivability is pretty terrible. The armor itself is pretty underwhelming, especially at this battle rating. And as I've said, if you get an actual hit and it penetrates, your crew members are going to be turned to hummus. That is a polite way of putting it. The only real redeeming feature is the strong gun, but then again, at pretty much every tank at this battle rating shares literally the same gun and license built copies of the same ammunition. So it's rather unremarkable, apart from the fully stabilized rocket pods. Is that worth grinding out the majority of the Israeli tech tree, as well as three tanks in a folded? For most people, it's probably not. But if you are getting a little bit stressed out of War Thunder and you want something to relax to and just have a little bit of fun, I can't think of many other tanks in any tech tree as fun to play as the Magak Hydra. Anyway, lads, thank you very much for watching. As always, a huge thank you to my YouTube producers, especially my longlist member, Lola Alfonso, with 33 months, as well as Tans on 33, as well as the Boa LX, Dr. Bob, Tomsa013, RS28 Sarmat, Pumpin, Schlunty, and Van Haler. Once again, a big thank you to my YouTube members. Couldn't do these videos without you guys. And as always, lads, thank you for watching and subscribing and liking, and I'll see you all in the next video. Hey, lads, if you made it this far into the video, then thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I have a whole load of other content on my channel, including tutorials and other vehicle reviews, so why not give them a watch? And if you like them, please do consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching, though, boys. I've been Sarko, and I'll see you in the next video.